welcome to Connect to Florida. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the four reasons that Naples, Florida is no longer the investment mecca that it used to be. And let me tell you, it used to be the number one place, in my opinion, in Florida that you could just kill it financially if you were an investor. And it really didn't matter what type of investor. Somebody who is just looking to buy something and maybe rent it out part of the year and use it the rest of the year. What I'm speaking to is really, really pretty much anybody who is looking to make money on a real estate investment by means of buy and hold. So really just putting it into a rental program or into the rental market. Because of the wealth that's down in Naples, a lot of people have really been able to make a lot of money in those investments. But anymore, it's just not there in the way that it used to be. So we're going to talk about the four reasons that I think that's going on. So if this is the first time we're meeting, I want to say hi, my name is Barrett Pastor, and I've been a real estate broker for over 25 years. So hopefully I am coming to you from a place of knowledge and experience, and I can help you navigate through all of this real estate terrain here in Florida. Now, if you are not new to my channel, you know that the area that I mostly work, feet on the ground, is Southwest Florida. So Naples is my my zone. It's my territory. I work Naples, Bonita Springs, Estera, Fort Myers, all the way up to Sarasota. So that's kind of the zone that I have feet on the ground between myself and my team. My What I'm most familiar with is the coastal parts of Florida. So up and down, southeast, southwest coast. That's my area of expertise. And then I do a little bit right there in the center because so many people are interested in the villages. But that's a whole nother conversation. If you want to do a deep dive into the villages, let me know down in comments. Let me know your questions about that and we'll jump into that as well. I have some opinions on the villages that I would be happy to share. But right now today, we are talking about Naples, Florida. So... I have been involved in real estate in Naples, Florida for probably almost my entire career, let's say about 17 years. So I've watched the ups and the downs, the kind of stagnant market, the way on the upswing market, and everything in between. And yes, we all know that we have had a bad market back in the initial crash, back in the initial bubble that we all refer to. That was pretty rough. But even if you drop that into the median or even into the average, as a whole, Naples, Florida has been a very, very strong investment because it bounces back so quickly from hurricanes and downturns and things like that. It just always seems to bounce back quickly. But, but, hello, 2023, 2024. Oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? We're going to talk about it. Here are the top four reasons that I think Naples is not necessarily where I would tell you to spend your money if you had a big 1031. Let's say you had a half a million dollars in 1031 and you need to spend it. Where are we going with it? Well, right now, probably not Naples. This is why. Number one, rules. So with a half a million dollars or in that sort of ballpark, that's a pretty substantial number. Can we agree that's a pretty substantial number? But if you are looking to turn a profit, then you have to actually drill down into the finite details of what you have there. So let's say you buy a beautiful little condo, two bedrooms and a den, two bathrooms, a little lake view. You can't get the Gulf of Mexico, but let's say you get a, a pretty lake view with a fountain, nice unit furnished. And you believe, your agent has told you, that you can rent that for $6,000 a month. Now... Here's what you have to remember. A lot of agents do not look at that rental and see that, hold on a minute, 6000 a month was in high season, January, February, March. But in the off season, they were vacant, 
75% of the time, and when they were able to rent, they were renting for half that number, so $3,000 a month. So when you're having somebody run numbers for you, you really have to make sure they're looking at that because we have seasonal numbers and off-season numbers. So that makes a difference. You want to look at the end of the day, what is your net number look like? So because of rules, you might say, well, I can, you know, I can rent during the week of 4th of July and I can rent for a week during Christmas. And my agent told me I can rent pretty much every single week in January and do great. People will pay the maximum. That all may be true, but the rules in the condominiums might state and many times will state that you can rent three times a year at a minimum of 60 days. Or maybe you can rent you know, a minimum, there's several of them that you have a minimum of 120 days. So four months, and it might be twice a year. So there's no rhyme or reason to that. And you have to know those rules. Now you might say, well, so what? I don't care about that. I'm breaking them. I'm a rule breaker. I'm going to break those rules. Who's going to know? There is no such thing as the landlord police out there. Well, you might have a Mrs. Kravitz type neighbor. You know who Mrs. Kravitz is. If you remember Mrs. Kravitz, let me know down in comments. I'm wondering, am I aging myself? But you might have that kind of neighbor and they make a phone call to the HOA manager and they say, uh, Jim Smith over there that just bought on unit one, two, three, he's renting weekly. He's bragging about at the pool about how much money he's making. And that isn't fair because the rules say we have to have a 120 day lease. So keep that in mind. Those rules, they will enforce them and they will come down on you and they will not allow you to do that. And it gets really, really ugly. I've seen people get into lawsuits for that. So there are all kinds of rules in terms of rentals. Number two, and this is very similar to rules. This actually probably falls under the same heading, but VRBO. I would say one in three calls that I get is someone saying, I want to do a VRBO vacation rental by owner. And I think sometimes they call it home away now, but basically what they're saying or Airbnb, what the person is saying is I want to rent nightly weekends, whatever it may be. I want to be able to do that. And some people have gotten wise to it. Maybe they had a good real estate agent tell them about the rules. They're going to get in a condo. So they said, you know what? I'm not worried about it. I have 700,000. Get me the best non HOA home, single family home, because that's not going to happen anywhere in a condo unless you're doing a condo tell and that's another conversation we don't even want to that's a whole different ball game of problems so let's say you buy somewhere non-hoa and you're thinking you're going to do great here's the thing many counties entire counties Callier county included lee county included fort myers beach included all of northport included as a city a lot of these places are saying and getting very strict about no nightly rentals or no Airbnb, no VRBO. Now, there is a small handful of communities that do still allow it, but the neighbors absolutely hate it. And they make your life miserable because they don't want to live next door to a revolving hotel door. All right, number three, we are seasonal. In Naples, much more so even than Fort Myers or Cape Coral or Benita Springs or Estero, Naples is very, very seasonal. So is Marco Island, very seasonal. You're going to see the predominance of people in Naples January, February, and March. Now, you do have some folks that show up kind of like right after Thanksgiving, and then they leave about the time that Easter is coming. So about late November to early April. That's the full kind of scope of season. But most people are there January, February, and March. That is our high season with the caveat of some kind of stragglers. As soon as it gets cold up north, people are showing up. So figure maybe November to April. That is season for us. Off season, being those opposite months, it's hard to rent 
And most people do run at over a 50% vacancy, depending on what their rules are in their community, depending on if they bought thinking they could break the rules and now they can't because they're in a gated community because they wanted like a lock and leave. And what's happened is their renters can't get in. They can't get in the pool. They can't play golf. They can't even get through the guard gate because somebody thought they were going to break the rules. They didn't register the lease with the HOA. So their renters are not being recognized recognized in the community and now you're in big trouble. So that creates a massive problem. All right. And then the last one, hurricanes. Are hurricanes new to the area? No, of course not. They absolutely are not. But historically, we have not been getting bombarded with hurricanes the way that we have in the last, say, three to five years. In that time frame, we have had some whoppers. I mean, bad ones. And we all know about the basically biblical storm we had in Irma, which, I mean, that was devastation like no other. Do a little bit. If you're familiar with the area, look up what happened with Charlotte Harbor. It basically airlifted like a wave and threw itself on Fort Myers Beach. There are pictures. If you do a little Google search, I'll see if I can find something to put up here for you. But there's actually pictures and we saw them on the news because I was actually there during the hurricane. We didn't leave. So that storm was incredible. It basically threw all that water all over Fort Myers Beach, which obviously devastated it, but all the rest of that excessive water that came in, this was not a wind event. That was not the problem. It was the flooding. The worst case scenario is exactly what happened, and it just destroyed everything, and it took a solid two years to really even get back to sort of normal. A lot, a lot, a lot of people are still rebuilding. A lot of people are still fighting with insurance companies, and you know, that, that hits hard and people leave. People don't want any part of that and they tell their friends of their friends of their friends. And then those people don't want to show up because they get nervous. You know how many renters had to pack up everything they owned and try to get out of there? As a seasonal renter, even if you don't have much, you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know that if you jump on 75, you're going to be in gridlock for days. You don't know if you try to get across the other coast. A storm that big is hitting the other coast as well. So people, because there was so much talk about it because of devastation, the multiple hurricanes that have been pretty bad that we've gotten in the last several years have really influenced people's decisions to buy in Naples, Florida. So we don't want to always be negative. I want to give you a solution as well. So in the next video, I'm going to tell you what I think are the best places to invest right now. Who is doing great in terms of ROI, maybe with their 1031 or in their investment. So let me know what you think. Let me know as always down in comments. I read all of them and I'll see you in the next couple days for that video I just mentioned.